Hi friends! If you click to take a look at the newest addition to the Visual Edit Palette series, the Paris Edit, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. Today we will be going over product details of the Paris Edit. I received this a few days ago, dabbled in it lightly during my my live chat which is up posted up for you to see at this moment at the same time we demo the shades I will swatch them so you can see swatch and color in action I will also compare it to the rose edit so we could do comparisons with that palette but I feel the comparison you guys are heavily anticipating is with divine rose from mother pat so all time sets will be down below for the product details the swatch and the demo as well as the comparisons hop on down if you want to skip over and then I will see you there this palette retails for $39 and for $39 you get let me see here one, two, three. 12 eyeshadows. This is sold on Muse Beauty Pro. If you have a pro discount, you could get 30% off. This is also sold, I believe, on Sephora.com as well as Beautylish. I purchased mine from Beautylish because with the $39 purchase, that qualified me for free expedited shipping very happy about and i got this within the course of a few days from san francisco so very pleased with that here is a close-up of the shades the pans are small but they pack a lot of punch and i feel you have an array of shades that will give you several color stories within this strong theme very soft very rose very romantic very potty some other details we have here let, let me grab the box is a total of 12 grams so that makes it out to one gram per pan this has a suggested shelf life of 36 months and this product is made in the US of A. You got a soft matte packaging feel with this rose color, a magnetic flap here with a fabric tab so it's easy to lift, a mirror and you could actually lift this or prop it up like an easel and the actual pan frame is magnetic and you'll see here you have grooves throughout the frame that make the pans very easy to pop out so that means let's say you had your dark edit palette the dark edit palette is designed in the same way you can take these pans and pop them in your Paris palette or your rosé palette the other edit palette is more warm I think it's, that's called the warm edit I apologize for not having that on camera I don't know where she is I lost her so that makes four edits in all my favorite edit by far is the dark edit palette because this is this is my jam but very happy to finally get into the Paris edit all products that I have on my face will be listed down below I was excited to receive my Linda Heiberg infinity palette today I have pinwheel this blush color on alongside Virgio is that what it says Virgio I don't know if that's a misspelling or that's an actual word my bad I think that's something having to do with the galaxy I don't know I have that on the highlight on the contour I have my Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer in MD22 as well as M16, her foundation M's. I'll, I'll just put it all down there. And I use Linda's Medium Powder, her the official name, the Loose Infinity Filter Loose Setting Powder all over my face. So check those items out. But until then, why don't you come in a little closer? On the eyes, I have, well, I have two things. The Hourglass Airbrush Vanish Concealer right on my brow bone in Sienna and the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. I'll probably apply a little bit more when we get into the demo. We will use all shades. If this is your first time here, we like to use all the shades in one palette on this channel. So why don't we start with this soft pink? This will probably be our base shade. Applying a little more soft ochre, Sonagy Worker One. I'm gonna tap that onto the crease. It's very hard to see because I'm sitting in front of my window and I feel the light is washing it out. Let's see if I cut down the exposure. It's a very light pinky shade and although light, it actually shows up some in person, so really happy about it regardless. Next up, we have this cream shimmer shade, and this very well could go on the inner corner or on the lid. That appears to have a little more texture, but that's okay. It leads me to assume that perhaps 
a finger application will work a lot better than a brush one. And with that, I'll place it on the inner corner and I suspected correctly. Really brightening. It's not so foily or metallic in nature, but it has a really nice champagne flip and it's a beautiful, soft, luminous glow to have on the inner corner or even on the brow bone. And why not? With that said, I'll take my Smith 256 brush, tap off the excess and use the point of the brush to apply that shade on the out on the arch of my brow and I think that has a soft focus effect almost like a moon glow effect next up we have this mauve shade which I'm very excited about because you know how I'll dig that shade and it has like a nice beige tone to it as well and using my synergy crease too pulling that on the crease now although I applied the pinkier shade on the crease let's see how they layer together it's a very soft look Perhaps we could apply that shade to this side. Judging my soft ochre just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And let's take that same shade on the crease with my same Sonia Crease 2 brush. It's still very light, but you can see it better here as a standalone shade more so than on top of that pastel light pink. It's buildable. It starts off very lightweight, but I love the hue. It's not warm but it does appear very beigey in nature, which makes me happy to know I could wear this as a standalone shade, whether it be just on the crease or I could bring it down to the lid as well. So that's that shade on the crease. Really excited for this shade. This is like a soft lavender matte. And next to the beige, well, you know, it kind of appears warmish too. Going with my Wayne Goss number six from his anniversary two sets. Popping that on the outer V of this eye, under that first beigey mauve shade we applied on the crease. Ooh, I really like that a lot. That's a great color. It's soft in nature, and it leads me also to believe if I were to just exclusively apply this on my crease, it'll have a smokier lavender effect but I do love the gradients that's created here, that we have this smoky lavender shade on the majority of the crease, and then you have the beige closer to the brow. So you have a nice gradient from lavender to a uh, beige shade here going on. If we wanted to bring that beige shade higher, going in with the first shade here, now with my Isom G34, bringing it closer to the brow so we could further blow it out. Ooh, that's nice. I like that shade a lot. Next up, we have this really nice soft lavender metallic shade. Dare I say lilac? Ooh, that's beautiful. It's lightweight, but the color is gorgeous. Definitely like a pastel lilac. I think now what I'll do, go in with a little more soft ochre here on the majority of my lid, taking that shimmer right where I applied soft ochre, ooh, and pressing it on. That is, m look at that. This has really a beautifully soft texture, but the shine is incredible. It's not glittery dazzle, so I'm happy to report if you're not into that type of texture, but you still want a little punch from the a uh, shimmer shade, a shimmer texture, I think you will love this. Going in with my Smith 256 with a brush application, I'm very well aware that I already applied the majority of the shade on the lid already, so it might look like the brush application is going well, but maybe, you know, you could get the first layer on first with your finger and then use the brush to kind of refine that application more so near and around the crease. I'm taking this lavender matte shade and punching it around the edges of the shimmer so it could appear as a smoother transition. And this shade is like a nice like, ooh, that's pretty. Let's take it right next to the lilac shade. Oh, I like that. That's beautiful. Definitely more of like a peachy moment versus a lilac moment, which I really admire about this palette. It just has a lot of different tones, but it still has such a soft romantic feel about it. Hopping back over to this eye. Now I feel this is more of a traditional shimmer. It doesn't have the same brightness as this lilac shade, but it has a nice sheen to it. And I think great for daily looks, 
but you don't want a typical champagne. It has like a peachy hue to it, and I think it makes the lid glow. Breeze with a finger application, absolutely. To complete both eyes, I'm going in with this beigey matte now with my Sonigi jumbo blender and punching that matte lavender shade here on the outer part of my lower lash line taking that beige matte on this eye we could keep it like this i like what's going on here but i want a little more depth here so what we'll do is i'll skip over the pink we'll come back to it swatch and apply when i start two new eyes but let's quickly swatch this plummy brown that you see here on camera has some sparkles in the matte base and this is a nice color i feel i realize it's not an impressive swatch but i think it definitely applies better with the brush on the lid and going on my wing gosh number five tapping on the outer v of this eye starting off very light and then once you get the majority of the product on there, you start to swirl and twirl onto the low part of the crease. And then I like to pull it out a little bit. You could keep it rounder and more in. And it's nice that it's buildable. So you don't have to feel intimidated by going in with the first initial blend and feeling like you have so much to blend. Now you can go in very lightly and it builds quite nicely. Taking my G34 Isom brush to just further blur. <laughs> blur, blur, blur. Sonigi build a two with that plummy brown on the lower outer lash line. Just punching that in so it could look more connected. Going in with a little more of that shimmer we originally applied on the lid to bring that back taking this shimmer again but on the inner part of this eye and pulling it around as well bringing it down onto the lower lash line here on the brow bone as well final zhuzh on both eyes all right friends let's pop on some lashes and i'll be right back and here we have a close-up of both eyes i have on the lashes ardell naked lashes in style 421 and here is a look of this lid on this eye. And here we have the more lavender hue on this eye. And here's a wide shot of both looks on lips. I have the new Gucci lipstick in Penny Beige lined with the Mel Thompson and Christian Aldette collab lip liner in shade Smooches. There's not much to say, friends. I absolutely love these two looks. They are soft. They are rosy in tone. This definitely has a little more smokier impact than the lavender eye. But I love the lavender too because if you were to see me in person, I feel this would appear a little more purple, light purple in hue. I feel the light is washing it out quite a bit. But this plum shade is extraordinary. I think it's just enough smoke to still appear daily friendly without looking too intimidating. If you still wanted to incorporate this shade in some way, you could then apply this on the lash line, have a smokier lash line instead of applying it on the outer corner as I did. You could apply this shade on this side too. I'm sure on top of the lavender matte, it will look quite beautiful. Maybe it'll bring out a little more of the plum hue that exists exists in this shade. Yes, I'm excited to take a look at this pink. So why don't we do that? Take this off and I'll be right back. Excited to try this soft pink matte. Definitely want to punch this color on. It has a warmer hue, I feel, than the light pink that we first applied in SWAT. Taking my Sonigi worker too. I'm punching that on to the crease because I'm sure if I fluffed it in, I would get a softer finish. And perhaps this will be a great shade to use to blend out the plummy brown in here, to even blend out the lavender matte shade. This is my third time punching on the color, but I'm satisfied with that because, you know, this I feel is supposed to be soft in effect, very lightweight, not super pink in your face. So that's how that shade looks on its own. Taking that plummy brown with my Isum S33 brush. Tapping that onto the pink just to see what effect that has. I'm switching brushes. I need something a little more grabby. There we go. Went back in with my Sonia G. Worker too. And I'm using the brush to swirl in towards the crease. Taking my Wayne Goss number four just to whisk the edges. I'm switching over to my Hakuhoro. Is this my Hakuhoro brush? No, I lied. It's my Refer number 14. I need a small crease brush 
to pack in this plummy brown. It could be because maybe I applied a lot of the first matte pink shade. I felt it stuck better to the warmer beige, but it's all good. We're gonna figure it out. I wanna pull that under the lower lash line as well, why not? Fluffing that pink again. It looks, I don't know what's going on here. I feel that perhaps I should have fluffed in that first pink matte. Maybe I would have gotten better results layering the plummy brown. Because when I keep my eye like this, you really can't see it. It's until I do this, but I'm really not going to do that on a, on a normal basis. So I think it's okay. This shade, though, I love. It's almost like a lilac silver moment. Using my finger to apply this on the majority of this lid. This is a softer texture is a beautiful shimmer shade. I think it has pretty nice coverage and it appears true to color from pan to lid. That is lovely. Next up, we have this nice rosy shimmer. Definitely a little warmer than the previous. That's gorgeous. Definitely applying it to this eye. I feel it matches well with that pink matte we initially applied. Same texture as the one here on the other eye. It's not crazy sparkly, but it has a nice glow and I feel it has a beautiful soft focus luminous effect on the lid. Oh yes. Bringing a little more of that pink matte in towards the inner part of the lid. This shade has beautiful shine. Look at that. I think this will make a great standout lid color. Ooh, that is gorgeous. So these look similar. This might have a little more of a rosier copper base, but this has more of the shine and the sparkles. So these together, I feel will make a great duo. And with that said, why don't I punch that onto this eye? Oh yeah, that really bumped it up. I think it's beautifully easy to apply with the finger. Let's try with the brush. Let's see how that goes. Sony G Pencil Pro. With that same rose gold dazzle shade onto the inner corner. I think that worked out quite nicely. And the last shade here is like a muted lilac lavender. This is the shimmer formula. Oh, I like that a lot. That has a lot more warmth than the silver. Together though, beautiful. Taking that with my reference number two. I wanna punch that on the outer corner. I feel like these two shades together I feel like some, some might happen here. I know it's not conventional, but I'm taking that same shimmer shade with my Wayne Goss number three and whisking it into the crease. Cause I actually like the shade a lot. And although it's not a traditional matte, I think it creates a beautiful smoky effect if applied on the crease. And very easy to blend out. Even though it's a shimmer, I think that's a really nice finish, really nice texture left behind post blend and applying that silvery lilac shade more on so we could get back what we might have lost during that blend. Taking this softer pink shimmer shade, this is a Wayne number seven from his anniversary two, placing that lightly on the inner corner of this eye. Oh, that's a nice transition, we like that. Taking my little Refer 13 mini blender with this shade we applied on the crease. Beautifully smooth and I think ideal not only for a lid look, but also to blend on the crease and lower lash line. Taking my Wayne number seven again with with the lilac silver shade on the inner lower lash line. Referred number 13 with the pink matte under this lash line. Drawing to smoke it out here. Taking the plummy brown again and just connecting to what we have going on at the top. Dabbing the edges as well to make that a more seamless transition. Just making this a little smoother. All right, friends, let's pop on some lashes and I'll be right back. Here's a close up of the final looks, friends. Same Ardell lashes in the shade Try that again. In the style 421, I apologize. This lash has been a little wonky ever since I first applied it, but you know what? We still love her. It's okay. And here's a look of the lid. I really love what we did here, combining the cooler purple with the warm plum purple and that pinkier hue on the inner corner. And I actually applied the champagne flippy shimmer on both brow bones of the eyes. 
Here's a wide shot of both eye looks and on the lips I have the same Gucci and Mel Thompson and Christian Odette lip liner and lipstick combo. I'm really happy with all four looks. I'm happy that we're able to use all 12 eyeshadows. The only thing that I encountered was this plummy brown not giving me enough stick as I was expecting from when I used it in the first demo. That could be just maybe from applying too much of the pink matte and I needed to apply more primer on that portion of my lid. It could be a lot of things but I'm not too worried about it because ultimately I think this is supposed to appear softer in nature anyway and I think also the tone of the shadow itself lends that look it lends that feel and mood it's not sultry smoky it's more of a softer daily rosy type of smoke now that we've taken a look at the Paris edit palette I wanted to quickly bring out rosé here is rosé at the top and Paris on the bottom and there are some similarities for sure so we could take a look at these two browns we could take a look at the more purple and pink matches in here so here is the brown from rosé and right next to it we'll bring in the brown from paris so the one from rosé has a little more punch i think this is a better shade in general because looking at this now the one from rosé is a true matte and the one from the paris palette i think it has sparkles in it i'm swatching it again so maybe that's why the texture is not as consistent it's still a beautiful shade but you're definitely going to get more smoke out of the brown found in rosé taking a look at this purple from rosé and the silvery lilac from paris i mean totally different shades altogether i feel the one from rosé is meant to provide that veil of lavender a veil of purple it's like a dual chrome flip type of a gig that i feel is meant to be layered on another shadow to amplify that purpley type of look let's take a look at this pink found in rosé and why don't we you know i feel hmm i feel the sparkly pink from paris could be a good comparison oh it seems like the one from paris has a little more warmth and copper to it the one from rosé is a lot peachier in hue i feel and the texture itself is vastly different from the one found in paris definitely want to swatch this pink matte and let's check this pink matte out from paris next to the one from rosé oh yeah this this is more coral this is more warm I feel you get a lot more of a warmer situation here from the rosé palette versus this is like it appears baby soft pink next to the one from the rosé palette. And here is this matte beige from rosé, one found in Paris. Paris has a little more depth. This is more of a lighter beige color. Let's do one more. Let's take a look at this shimmer from the Rosé. And then this shimmer from the one in Paris. Oh! Rosé, a little more brown. That looks like a truer type of a bronze. And the one from Paris is more like a copper rose gold moment. I swatched this one here because they kind of look, well, now looking at them on camera, this definitely looks more bronze. And this taupier shade from Rosé. And let's try the beige one again from Paris. Now that definitely has a little more of a deeper neutral brown hue. And the one from Paris is definitely that same beigey mauve. I think those are my standout comparisons. If I am missing any, I am terribly sorry now that we've done rosé i know we definitely now most definitely want to see the comparisons with mama pat's divine rose here's the plummy brown from the parry edit and here is extreme mahogany right next to it i think in terms of shades they're actually quite similar but extreme mahogany has a little more red and it definitely just has a little more pudge i feel this is a softer shade in general in terms of impact and texture but they are similar I feel in in vibe like that plummy brown type of a feel but the one from Pat I think has a little more red in it this lavender matte from Paris you know we're gonna swatch that next to Veloria the matte here from Divine Rose oh Veloria is a lot smokier in hue I feel it it's funny, when you see these next to each other, I feel you automatically think they're going to be the same, but it appears that Veloria 
has a little more lavender and you see there's a lot more pink present than the one found in the Paris edit. Taking this shimmer that I really loved on the first demo, I don't think I have, mm, well, Bronze Sable, I feel is gonna be a different shade altogether. Yeah, it's, it's a totally different shade altogether. It definitely has more body than the shimmers found in Viseart. I think that's generally known between Pat shimmers and Viseart shimmers which is fine. I think Viseart has a role in that space where if people want a thinner consistency and they don't want as much texture on the lids and they definitely lean more towards the Viseart formula than they would with the Pat formula. Let's see this shimmer from Paris. Let's take a look at Lovelace from Divine Rose. Lovelace has a lot more smoke and this, I mean, they're different colors altogether. This is a lot pinkier. It has like that pastel light pink moment softer in hue and lovelace is just like a smokier lavender metallic color and of course let's swatch this champagne shade and we'll take a look at divine roses skin show nude glow this i feel is a lot pinkier and this is a lot almost like a yellow champagne compared to the one found in Divine Rose. I hope those comparisons help friends. If anything, the standout for me in terms of the difference between Divine Rose and the Viseur Paris edit is I think Divine Rose is a lot smokier in hue. It's smokier because of the presence of Veloria in terms of the color that takes on. And with Bronze Sable and Lovelace, those two metallic shades just have, they just, they just have that, it's like almost like they're gray in tone versus the shimmers found in the Paris edit. Now what I will say is that the one advantage you have with buying the Paris edit is that it's $39 versus $125. Not only that, you're getting 12 shadows instead of 10, it's a smaller palette, much easier to travel with, and you have more color options, right? As much as I love Divine Rose, and this is the palette that I would recommend that people buy first if they wanted to dump dump in. They wanted to jump into Pat McGrath. Maybe this one and I would say Midnight Sun because I think Midnight Sun, although the colors in there are punchier than the ones found in here, is I consider user friendly as well. But this is a more specific color story. Maybe with these, I did a look in my Divine Rose Revisit video using Rose Dusk as my prominent crease color and it definitely gave the eye like a warmer look overall that was vastly different from Lovelace and Valoria if I let's say wanted to combine these two shades. And I think it was one of our squad members, Toya, who was saying, and if it's not, I am so sorry if I forgot who said this, that we wish there was a pinkier matte in this palette. It would have been nice just to have another opportunity to veer off the smoking lavender part of the spectrum that exists heavily in Divine Rose, that you could create pinkier, warmer looks using that same palette, but I get it. You know, if you wanted to do so, you could definitely rely on Rose Dusk and apply the VR Rose Venus shade all over your lid. Now, people were concerned, despite how beautiful these shades are, that they could appear a little dusty on deeper complexions, right? Because although they're beautiful shades, I think the nature of the colors I feel are maybe a little too soft to appear like they do in pan. But I also said that Viseart mattes are impeccable in that whatever shade you see in the pan, it will translate the same on multiple skin tones. Still though, I feel the best palette to go with if you are deeper complected is the dark edit because these are just richer in hue. But I understand though, if you wanted that soft romantic look, I understand it doesn't exist in this curation. Maybe you have the Paris edit and you find that it was successful in terms of presenting the shades here on your lids well and they did not appear dusty or light in nature. Let us know down below. Unfortunately, the mattes probably not gonna appear color rich, but I feel the shimmers could. I think the, this whole row would look beautiful on deeper complexions. Even this color here, it looks light in the pan, but it has a warmer flip to it when applied on the lid. And this shade here has nice dazzle and shine. The matte in here, I feel, is not as punchy as a lot of Viseart mattes are, but I think it's 
because it's not an actual traditional matte. It has the sparkles in here. Maybe that makes it a little drier. I'm not too sure. You guys can let me know down below if you have any perspective on that shade. Overall though, I love the Paris Edit. I feel if you are my complexion, you could get a lot of use out of it. You could create different tones of eye looks. You see you, this is very smoky here and this very rosy pink here. So they are varying eye looks moods that still exist within the realm of romantic spring type of a feel and if you are a fan of Viseart edit palettes in particular i think you'll be very happy to have this one in your collection let me know friends if you picked up the paris edit and what your favorite Viseart edit palette is and until then friends that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another review tutorial get ready with me or friday night chit chat take care and i'll see you again soon